Hello, and welcome to A Viewer's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika, and this show right here is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that this guy seems to step on. I'm super excited about today's episode. I got um, a lot of awesome feedback from yesterday's video on the audiobook narration tip uh, and about personality. And um, But one of the big things I got uh, from the feedback session was uh, we loved it, but it, um, would it have been possible to do a couple examples or show us of a couple examples? So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple examples. I'm going to read some of my favorite. I'm going to read uh, just a passage from Bram Stoker's Dracula. And of course, one of my favorite other type of books, the, the Hardy Boys, The Tower of Treasure, which is book number one uh, by Dixon. And these two books are very different. <laughs> and I'm going to read from them. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a personality, a character trait into the reading of them as the narrator. And you're going to see uh, the difference in them, right? Uh, and and how you can utilize that as well. I think that feedback was great that I got yesterday. Uh, and... Um, I'm going to catch you up just briefly, really, on what we're going to be doing. So real quick, um, just make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I do post a video. And if you would like more information on starting and growing your voiceover business, we'd love to have you check out the link below to a VO's Journey Elite Academy where I do this kind of stuff and uh, more to help you with your business. And we have a bunch of other coaches who do live sessions every week with pre-recorded courses and archives and a great community and all that jazz. So we'd love for you to give us a shot and check out that link below. Okay, so um, yesterday, you know, I was talking about in my video um, the idea of the narrator themselves has a character, right? There's something there and a lot of times we, uh, as newer narrators or struggling narrators, and when I mean struggling, I mean to, to find a style, right? Um, we're struggling to find a style. We don't typically add a personality or we're not sure how. And let's be honest, it is not just the easiest thing in the world to start reading a book or start narrating a book and just being like, hey, I'm going to be a different character or different personality right for you know for 10 hours right and then do other characters and another personality that's it's hard and it takes uh skill it takes practice and you know there's you know some people um are inherently i think just up front they have a sort of interesting style that they the way they speak anyways that you can listen to where other people you know and I call these people more like lead male and female actors in the in the in the theater world or even the tv world right we have like lead actors lead male or females and then we have character actors all right and the people who you know could do a lot of different characters but they're not necessarily the people who are going to play the lead male or the lead female all right they're better you know and and that's just because they're really good at the sensitivities of being multiple things so i got that good feedback yesterday from everybody saying hey could you give us some examples so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna do that and uh, i'm just starting off at the first chapter of all of these books all right, and um, I'm I'm just gonna read a couple of paragraphs and kind of share with you uh, how uh, I'm I'm approaching this, and and hopefully you can hear some difference. Okay, and and you know if this was a live session we could chat about it, but uh, I, I hope to give you some ideas. So, of course, the first thing you want to do is when you have a book that you're doing, uh, if you cannot read the whole thing. Which, of course, the first point to all this is it would be the ideal thing to read the whole book okay, before you narrate it. However, I'm a realist, and the reality is, is that's very difficult for us working voice actors uh, who to, to read an entire book and then narrate it and then edit it. right? Because we, we, most of us don't have a team doing this for us. We're doing it all by ourselves. So at least find, you know, um, read the description of the book read the you know the the cliff notes or read the um you know the uh, uh, synopsis read the notes in the book whatever there is 
you know, ask some poignant questions to the author or the rights holder so you can get a good idea, a good feel for the overall uh, narration of the book, you know, the feel of it, what the what the author is going for. And of course, a good way to do this is also to look at, you know, what genre the book is in. OK, like, if, is it mystery? Is it horror? Is it comedy? You know, is it nonfiction? Is it first person, third person? You know, all these different things, you know, sci- is it sci-fi? Figure out what that is. And then a good tactic is to go and actually listen to narrators do that. All right. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this just the, the first um, couple paragraphs in chapter one here. And, you know, this to me, this book and I love uh, you know, I love the narrations uh, from uh, the the uh, uh, the Bram uh, from this one from like uh, Tim Curry and Alan Cummings and and you know people like in- incre- incredible narrators and actors, right? Um, but just going into the character here, right? Uh, for me, you know, this character, of course, it's a journal. As we know, it's laid out. It's being spoken that way, and we know that this character is. Uh, sophisticated, right? And they're learned. So I'm going to want to almost bring about, in my mind, you know, a transatlantic type of feel to this. Uh, And, you know, so I'm not going to have a British accent, but it's going to be a little bit more polished than just an American neutral accent. And I'm going to approach this character from a personality of, you know what I mean? I'm writing, you know, I'm uh, relating this information of what happened during that day. So hopefully my personality is going to be matter of fact. It's interesting, but you should be following the story and not necessarily wondering why, you know, like, like, so here's a little tip too about when you're narrating, you know, when, when someone's, when you're. And we talk about this on stage, too. When we're acting, it's important to um, carry on that suspension of disbelief, meaning we don't want people to focus all their energy just on, you know, why did they pause? Why did they take a breath? Like, we don't want them focusing on the act. We want them focusing on the story and what's happening, right? Not why you're, as an actor, are making choices. All right. Anyways. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to read it and uh, do a couple paragraphs, okay? All right, here we go. Chapter 1, Jonathan Harker's Journal, kept in shorthand. The 3rd of May, Bistritz. Left Munich at 8.35 p.m. on 1st of May, arriving at Vienna early next morning. Should have arrived at 6.46, but train was an hour late. Budapest seems a wonderful place, from the glimpse which I got from it off the train and the little I could walk through the streets. I feared to go very far from the station as we had arrived late and would start as near the correct time as possible. The impression I had was that we were leaving the west and entering the east, the most western of splendid bridges over the the Danube, which is here a noble width and depth, took us among the traditions of Turkish rule. We left in pretty good time and came after nightfall to Klausenberg. Here I stopped for the night at Hotel Royal. I had for dinner, or rather supper, a chicken done up way with red pepper, which was very good but thirsty. Memorandum. Get recipe for Mina. I asked the waiter, and he said it was called Paprika Handel, and that, as it was a national dish, I should be able to get it anywhere among the Carpathians. I found my smattering of German very useful here. Indeed, I don't know how I would or how I should be able to get it on without it. Okay, so that was my <laughs> stumbled a little bit word, two or three words there. All right, but you could tell on this one, the personality trait I was trying to make was this was a matter of fact. This was my journey. This was me telling you a story. All right. From a person who is recalling the details and it and and it's interesting, but it's also interesting how the person views it. Right. It's a very and I I use that transatlantic type of feel. Right. And by that transatlantic type of feel, it's um, it gives that very matter of fact 
um, full of inflection and interest, but not emotion. This is important, okay? For for this type of uh, read that I wanted to, I want to bring because there's plenty of fear and things that come later in the book, of course, but I wanted to relay the information with interest, intrigue, uh, wonderment, but without emotion. So you could hear that by me declaring statements, right? And not, you know, getting all huffy about it, about it. Okay. Okay. So that is one type of read. Now I want to pull out this other book, right? Which is, uh, very uh, American, <laughs> and um, you know I love uh, I love uh, you know the Hardy Boys. Uh, something I read and I love to I always love to go back and read these books. I just enjoy the adventure, and you know this type of book, right? Right about to Frank and Joe Hardy, uh, and even though it's written in third person. To me, the narrator, you know, could have a couple of different feels. And I personally like to or would like to narrate this from, you know, a a younger type of feeling person, you know, someone that is more closer to, to Frank and Joe. These are these are older teenagers. Right. Well, I mean, you know, um, they're they're in their late teens and they, you know, are detectives kind of like their, their their dad but at the same time they're just starting out and it also takes place you know a long time ago right um and uh through the the mid part of the 20th century so you know we've got uh, a lot of um it's 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 going to be good, clean, wholesome, fun, but also lots of action. So I want to bring that along. So my character for this, I want to bring a personality of kind of, you know, fun, carelessness, upbeat. I'm even going to raise the pitch of my voice a little bit, as you can tell with Dracula, right? I mean, I almost lowered, you know, I, 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 I lowered my voice, right? But this one, I'm going to kind of raise it up. All right. And I'm going to give it a little bit of almost a little more American slang, in my opinion. All right, let's 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 try here. Okay. Um Chapter 1. The Speed Demon. Frank and Joe Hardy clutched the grips of their motorcycles and stared in horror at the oncoming car. It was careening from side to side on the narrow road. "He'll hit us. We'd better climb the hillside and fast," Frank exclaimed as the boys brought their motorcycles to a screeching halt and leaped off. "On the double!" Joe cried out as they started up the deep embankment. To their amazement, the reckless driver suddenly pulled his car hard to the right and turned into the side road on two wheels. The boys expected the car to turn over, but it held the dusty ground and sped off out of sight. Wow, said Joe. Let's get away from here before that crazy guy comes back. That's a dead end road, you know. The boys scrambled back into their motorcycles and gunned them a bit to get past the intersecting road in a hurry. They rode in silence for a while, gazing at the road seen ahead. On their right, an embankment of tumbled rocks and boulders sloped steeply to the water below. From the opposite side rose a jagged cliff. The little traveled road was winding, and just wide enough for two cars to pass. Boy, I'd hate to fall off the edge of this road, Frank remarked. It's a hundred-foot drop. <laughs> That's right, Joe agreed. We'd sure be smashed to bits before we'd ever get to the bottom. Then he smiled. Watch your step, Frank, or Dad's papers won't get delivered. Frank reached into his pocket to be sure several important legal papers, which he was to deliver to Mr. Hardy, were still there. Relieved to find them, Frank chuckled and said, <laughs> After the help we gave Dad on his latest case, he ought to set up the firm of Hardy and Sons. Why not? Joe replied with a broad grin. Isn't, the one of the most, isn't he one of the most famous private detectives in the country? Aren't we bright too? Then, becoming serious, he added, well, I wish we could solve a mystery on our own, though. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. Uh, you know, and and I think also it's important to note too that part of this whole journey in narrating books and becoming a narrator, at least in my humble opinion, right, is about you as a performer finding what's true to you and what you enjoy and what you bring to the table. Okay, so I wanted a more young 
hip uh, for whatever the worth that is, for whatever I'm good at or not, uh, try on this. A little more easygoing. Um, you know, it, it, you can see there's a lot of more dialogue in this with Frank and Joe in the beginning. There's there's action right off the bat. There's, you know, stuff going on. Um, you know, the that old yellow jalopy, <laughs> if you know Hardy Boys. So, uh, you know, I try to bring a different feel to that book than Dracula. And the personality of the narrator, hopefully you heard the difference in those personalities and then bringing the story more to life because it's interesting then to listen to the narrator, okay? Um, in the end, the listener is going to determine <laughs> whether they like it or not, but I think that by simply taking a book, adding some parameters around it, saying, okay, I want to try to do this with the book. I think just by starting that, right, and I get some coffee, just by starting that very, uh, starting off your narration journey with that question, what do I want to try to accomplish with my narration? Okay, you know, what? what's the subtext of what I'm doing as a narrator and as a storyteller? I think that will already give you a leg up on the narration of the book. And of course, practice, have fun, play around, you know, try different things, listen to narrators. Okay, um, I've also heard what I, I also love a different narration style, which I chose not to copy it, but uh, I enjoy a narration style like this is also like a radio show. Right. So you have that kind of, you know, uh, Frank and Joe Hardy, you know, that, that kind of that kind of tone. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and you could you, if you look at it that way, you know, you could see how, you know, it could be an interesting way of reading it, too. You know, because uh, you could say, you know, uh, you know. Frank and Joe Hardy clutched the grips of their motorcycles and star stared in horror at the oncoming car. It was careening from side to side on the narrow road. He'll hit us! We'd better climb this hillside and fast! Frank exclaimed as the boys brought their motorcycles to a screeching halt and leaped off. On the double! Right, you could see, you could see how you know. Of course, I was overdoing it, you know, because I was I was getting that it's the end of the world, you know. But you can you can tone it down a little bit and have fun with it. But you can see how that gives also another personality from the book, okay? Um, and that's what's fun about acting and narration, at least to me, is that we get this opportunity to play and do all these wonderful things. So, listen, I hope this was a lot more helpful and at least gave you a, a little bit more examples than I did yesterday. Thank you guys for everybody for your feedback. And uh, please leave your comments and questions below on, on stories and narrations and how you start that journey and what you add to the narrator or uh, the narration, right, as, as a performer. Um, so thank you guys. As always, check out that link below for VO's Journey Elite Academy where we I do kooky stuff like this all the time. And uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great, great Wednesday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.